This is a recording with Reverend To Siang Hui, Ascension number 002007, real 3. Yeah, we're talking about the attack. So this attack house became the, past, became the parsonage. It's a parsonage, but it also became the church meeting place. And his congregation was not big. We had about 20 odd people, mostly Teochew and live in Aukang and rather poor people, not, not very well off. Mm -hmm. So we worship in this church under grandfather's tutelage. And he was there for nine or ten years, mm -hmm. until 1937, I think. We disintegrated. Mm -hmm. So we had a wonderful time staying in this uh, Atap house. Mm -hmm. That was the wonderful upbringing because we stayed in Singapore to study and go home only during holidays. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a real wonderful teacher. Mm -hmm. he, uh, what was the cause of the disintegration then? Well, first of all, my father and grandfather would flare up, so they are not happy. Mm -hmm. My grandfather is very thrifty, but my father is very lavish. Very lavish. But was your father not then back in uh, Sinai? Yeah, yeah, I'm referring to the days in Sinai. Oh, right, right. So because of the disintegration, the clash, my grandfather also left Sinai to came to, and came to Singapore to be passed. That's how the Lord worked out in our training, you see. Mm -hmm. So we had a very wonderful place for spiritual growth, mm -hmm and for studying in the good schools. My sister went to MGS, mm -hmm. and then we had two aunts. The youngest aunt uh, went to uh, this um, MGS and CZMS. Mm -hmm. There was a Zinana, you know, CZMS uh, Anglican. Mm -hmm. So the two aunts, they went to the CZMS school, and then my youngest aunt became a nurse, and all staying there la, in the right. same place. Right. What about ad adaptation to Singapore's life compared to... Oh, we are very happy. We live uh, in the Atap house, there's no electric light, so we have got to use this uh, kerosene lamp. Mm -hmm. And I'm the one who takes care of the lamp. So. And then we have a big well down the steps. We children have to carry the water to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. There's no, no water system. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to carry water and put it in jugs. Uh. Mm -hmm. And our kitchen is there at the back. My aunts will cook, but we children will carry the water. And I'm manager of the uh, <laughs> conservancy system. <laughs> and I'm not afraid of all this manure. I'm used to it, mm -hmm. not afraid. And we have a lot of bananas. So I bury them from plot to plot. We've got the biggest bananas because they get all the riches. Mm -hmm. uh, that's ah, my job. That's right. That's, that's right. my job. Yeah. So, shuttling between Singapore and Johor, how, how, how do you adjust to that? Well, whenever <laughs> vacation comes, we happily go back la, to see our parents. Mm. The only thing I don't like is I get beating because I didn't become first one. Second only kind of beating. <laughs> My father. <laughs> you must be first. Right. Of course, I'm mostly first. I once in a while, maybe second. Mm -hmm. And I get a whacking. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, love was very happy uh, because of Christian love and hymns. And when I go home, we go to church. We are very obedient. And that uh, religious up upbringing was very good for us. Mm. You actually stay within the grounds of the church itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah right. So we take care of the church too. We sweep the church and keep it clean and all that. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's talk a little bit about your education. Your schooling years at Anglo Chinese School. When did you join ACS? I think um, 19. I joined the afternoon school first. You came in 1926. And 27, uh, um, I think 27, I got into the afternoon school, and uh, maybe 28, I get into the morning school. Mm -hmm. I had a waiting list. Mm -hmm. Was and that 
at uh, Coleman Street. Coleman Street. Right, where my office is now. Oh, oh, oh. The National Archives of Singapore. Oh. Right. Teachers and classmates, any recollection of them? Yes. And their influence on you? Can you share with us? Yes, I think we had a tremendously good education and uh, the teachers are very dedicated. Mm. Some are pastors and they also taught. And um, I graduated in 1937 and I can still remember Gu King Sui, he was two years before me, Lim Kim San, I think also two years before me. Yeah. These are the big names. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, Hinch was a principal. Very, very powerful, very good, strict. So we had very good results. Mm -hmm. And then as to the teachers, we come to the secondary school, Jiu Kia Song, Tio Chan B, C.P. Woodford, mm -hmm. and there's one Mr. Dempsey, B.A., he taught us English, mm -hmm. and even Bishop Amstutz, mm -hmm. Reverend Amstutz, he also would teach us mm -hmm. whenever there's a lack of teachers. So, on the whole, we had very good training. Mm -hmm. Was there any role model for you in ACS? Well, I think I admired uh, Tio Chan B quite a bit. Mm -hmm. He 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 taught us really good English. I still remember that. Right. What about any classmates that you get along well with? Yes, I have uh, some classmates I get along with, but uh, I don't think they are well known in this age. Mm -hmm. Right. So, what happened after ACS? What did you do? So after ACS, I did not know what to do. And my sister was in the medical studies. He was three years uh, ahead of me. And then uh, I didn't want to take medicine. And then somehow I chose science, right? the art stream. Mm -hmm. And that's where I landed up in Raffles College taking science. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was my first failure, great failure. Was there any particular reason why you choose to read science? Just to be vain glorious, not having any objective. I was not sure what I was doing, no. Mm -hmm. But just to be say, to say that I've gone through university and I get a, a degree. That's all. That's all I wanted. Right. And and I forgot about the consecration to go into full time. So no, mm -hmm. I forgot already by that time. Mm -hmm. Did Did your mom remind you of of? My mom sort of left it to me, you are big already. And so she did not uh, say much. She did not say much. Right, right. Your relationship with your siblings, how would you describe it? Oh, very, very, very close. We love one another very closely mm -hmm. because we went through the slum. You know, the 1930s? The, yeah, 20, 2930. Right, the Great Depression. The Great Depression. Mm, how did how did it affect you? That it was uh, very, very poor uh, because we eat only bubor and we are always hungry. We always think of uh, nice food like uh, like cold storage. Uh. Mm. I stand outside and smell the smoke ham. Uh. Mm. Beautiful, <gasps> uh, but I'm so hungry. <laughs> but anyway, it's good because it deepened character mm. that we know what it is to be poor and what it is to to be in hard circumstances and that's that's good actually that leads me to another question and that is like your earlier years in Kentum I believe you have quite a good number of years in China your family was fairly well known well in good Ch status in China we're in, in, in good I mean uh, in good standing right in a good standing is it not true then when you came to Singapore things changed it didn't get it didn't get better but it got worse we we are too young to understand that. Yeah. We are too young to. We, we just uh, we got our parents take care of us and whatever, and then we get good education also, mm -hmm. and we are quite happy. But how did the Great Dep Depression um, impact your family? When the Great in Depression came, my father did not practice when he came to Singapore. He is China trained. He cannot. So he 
has to rely on the rubber estate, but you tap the rubber, it that is not even able to pay the coolies. Mm. So actually, many estates stop tapping because you cannot make any profit. Mm -hmm. So what? How do you subsist? My father has to keep on borrowing money from people, mm. and I feel always so sad. Now. Mm -hmm. I go out with him, and he'll be seeing another friend, you know, and borrow another sum of money, and then go and borrow. Otherwise, you cannot subsist. So that make a very uh, dampening impression on me. Mm. How how sad it is. Were you not studying then? I studied. You were in Raffles College. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that was, was la earlier. Yeah, earlier. yeah, uh, much went, later. When did you go into Raffles College? 1938. Mm. But this was 1939, 1930. Mm. These were the early days. Mm. And so we. And my younger brother Xiang Yu, he's a doctor in Penang, but he's died already. Mm -hmm. He died about three years. Mm -hmm. He had to stop schooling because the school fees were two fifty. Two dollars fifty is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And he was going to Malayan seminary. Because we're living up in Sarangun, for him to go to school is just half a mile away, just walk only. Mm -hmm. But one day we had no money, so my father stopped him from schooling. Mm -hmm. So when we heard that he had to stop school, we all cried. <laughs> we, we children all wept mm -hmm. for him, mm -hmm. and he, after two or three months, then he got reinstated. Mm -hmm. But that is how it impacted us. Right. <clears throat> and you got to, you got to stay in school. Of course, I must stay in school. But then he was a odd one, mm -hmm. so my father said, better let him stop for a while. Mm -hmm. So, and Xiangwa also starting school. He went to McNair, Towner Road, mm -hmm. government school first. Then later on, I put him into ACS. Mm -hmm. right. Was well, getting into ACS difficult then? Quite difficult. And how, how did The you reason being as China born. Mm -hmm. China born, we have to just uh, stand away, you see. Mm -hmm. And how, how did you manage to get entry into ACS? Well, somehow my mother knocked very hard. Somehow my mother was very insistent. And so somehow I got in right, right. through my mother. Mm -hmm. She must have used all her powers to get people to speak to the principal and all that. Finally, I got in. Mm -hmm. And in 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 Raffles College, um, how did you how did you feel when compared to those days in ACS, you were doing much worse? Well, it was a misery trip every day. So sad and so unhappy. That every week I've got to do for 40 sums, high mathematics, which I didn't like to do. And that was killing. Going to school is just like going to prison. Mm -hmm. But you see, the Lord was grinding me. I was out of His will. Mm -hmm. My grandfather gave me to the Lord, my mother, I myself, John Soo meetings. Of course, until I got married and then the baby girl died. And then at that point, I wanted to go to London when. My father was going to give me $4,000. So the third great turning point came in 1946. Mm. My turning point was when I was born, given. 1935, John Soon. Then 1946, the death of the baby. Mm. And then I capitulated. Let's talk about 1935 John Soon revival. How did it have an impact on you? Well, it is so deep. They can feel it to this day. Mm. I never heard of the message that a man must be born again. Mm. So when I was confronted, I am not born again, so I'm not saved. Mm. So I had to receive the Lord after two sermons. Mm -hmm. The second sermon then, are you born again? I was not, so I put up my hand. What was the mood like in, oh, in Singapore it was, then? It was overbearing, it's overpowering. You come to the meeting, you don't argue. You can feel a sense of God's presence. That you cannot argue with God. You are a sinner. You are a sinner. You, you have stolen things. You have been evil. You've been bad. Everybody accepts. Mm. So they we just confess our sins and receive Him. And then there was a great praises and great dedications and great de this. But then you see, I was good for only three years. Mm. After that, I began to drift. Mm. 
Mm. Now, Reverend Toh, tell me, after 1935, Jiang Sung's revival, what impact did it have in the history of the Singapore churches? Well, the church was very revived, and they are the main churches, Presbyterian, Methodist, Presbyterian, partly Anglican, partly Baptist, but not the Brethren churches. Mm. Why not? This is a Bethesda. I don't know. They, uh, uh, they were out and also modernist churches, Methodist, the, the liberal, they don't care. Mm. But the Chinese church, is a Chinese church that got revived. Mm -hmm. And what were the effects on the present church today since the revival? Well, I think uh, the result can be seen, particularly in the BP movement, because Reverend Kwe Kuk Chiang, myself, and my brother, we are the three who have survived the revival and we have been serving even from nearly 50 years ago. Mm. So that revival fire burns in us mm. and the evangelistic drive is also in us, mm. which has given great impetus to the BB movement, particularly. Mm -hmm. And there are others who were greatly blessed, like uh, Elder Peter Yap. He was an interpreter for Billy Graham in 1978. Mm -hmm. uh, he's another one of the John Sung followers. Mm -hmm. Such people, uh, they are the real the power, the, the power that, that leads the churches. Right, right. You mentioned Breakfast College. What happened after you finished Breakfast College? I was there only three months. One th first time I failed already. I, oh, yeah. I ran away. And what happened after that? You went to the courts. Uh, then I went to be trained as an interpreter, one and a half years. Mm. Can you tell me about the courses that you attended then? We have to study English, phonetics. That's why I'm teaching phonetics, because I studied there. Mm. And Chinese, and one dialect. Mm. Where did you study? Apart from your mother tongue. So I passed my Cantonese. Tomorrow you will see me officiate and I'll be preaching in Cantonese. I can do it. Mm. Where do you study your languages? We study the dialect Cantonese under a Cantonese teacher. Chan Xin Zhang. He's an opium smoker, but anyway, he's all of the classical, you know and old classics. So we study Cantonese through him. English, we have Mrs. Harper. He's a teacher of the Fairfield Girls School, but she is to train us in phonetics. Mm. So we're thoroughly ground to pronounce correctly. And then the rest is up to you. Chinese and English is up to you. Self-study. Was it not in a private school that you attended? No, no, it's a government school. Mm -hmm. Government training class, we have an English teacher and we've got a Cantonese teacher. Mm -hmm. These are the two given to us. What's so special about this school that has got a mixture of English and Cantonese? It's a government school, training scheme. Do you remember the name of the school? No, no, it's, we have no, no name. It is just simply in the Chinese Secretariat building. You know the Chinese Secretariat? Where about? It's near the, the courts, the, the small courts. Right. That, that old building is still there. Mm -hmm. It's preserved. Mm -hmm. And we have our classes inside there. Mm -hmm. And the teacher will come every afternoon to train us in a speech. Yeah. And in the morning, we have a Canadian teacher who teaches us our dialect, how to pronounce. Mm -hmm. And we have got to go through all the lessons. Right. Now, Reverend, I'm not going to cover during the war years because you have already been interviewed on the uh, Japanese yeah, yeah, occupation. Yeah, yeah. So let's pick up after the Japanese occupation. What exactly happened when the British came back? Yeah, that is where I wanted to go to England. Mm. And uh, the British came back, I went back as an interpreter serving mm. the same. Mm -hmm. And then I, started to be I began to apply for my admission. I got admitted to London U and Mill Temple. Mm. And then the turning point in the, the, and, then, and then the turning point came. Mm -hmm. The turning 
point came and with the death of my baby daughter, I decided now to go to China. Mm. And then I had uh, this uh, Dr. Marcus Chen in Chungking Seminary. Mm. And I was going to Chungking. Mm. Why did you choose to go to China and not elsewhere? I don't know. Uh, that, that is the only road open to me. Chinese Bible, Chinese Bible School, where I found my wife, mm. and that was I got married before the war, no. And now after the war, I've got three children, and then one, this uh, Lilin, this seven-month-old baby girl died. Mm. They asked me why I want to go to China, because that's the, the only opening to me. Mm -hmm. What was your family's reaction to the news that you were going to? Oh, my father was, uh, was a wholly submissive. He said, this is the will of the Lord. Mm -hmm. My brother was submissive. He knew that's the will of the Lord. My sister helped me, gave me some money, and they all agree that that's the will of the Lord. What about Nancy? Oh, she was submissive. All together agreed. So I had 14 packs of luggage. Sadly, I said goodbye to my sister at the steps of Boat Key, you know. Mm. The old days, all the junks. Uh, and I took a sampan to the outer roads. The ship is called Anhui, an old ship. And... Uh, I got there as a deck passenger to save money. Mm -hmm. We could not afford to go in the cabin. Mm -hmm. And so we stayed on the deck, my wife and three children. Mm -hmm. uh, those are our canvas, canvas beds, huh? mm -hmm. we spread there. Mm -hmm. And um, my aunt in China, he was, she was a missionary in Engchun. At Amoy Siamen, mm. she was there to receive us. So we sailed from Singapore to Siamen and landed there. And she said, I'll take, care, take good care of your family. She was a missionary and she was working in Engchun, that is interior China. Mm. Not interior, but off the coast, about maybe a hundred miles in. Mm -hmm. And so we went there and left. My wife and two children there, I took my son and we are going to Shanghai and I'm going to leave my son there in Shanghai to my aunt and I'm going to take a river boat to Chongqing. That's how weird the, the arrangement is. a very flimsy arrangement. And can you explain it today why you had such a flimsy well, arrangement? Well, I, I was quite reckless. I said, well, anyway, trust a lot. We will just go. Abraham not knowing where he's going, so I'm also like that. Abraham not knowing where I'm going. And then my aunt said, you're crazy. You have to go to Chongqing, 2,250 2, miles, 2,500 miles. You're going to take over a month or sail. Why when you go to Nanking? There's just only 150 miles from Shanghai. My aunt was in Shanghai, you see, right. married. You go and hear Dr. Chia, Chia Yuming. You'll find him to be tops. So I went to hear, hear him. I got converted right away. So I did not go to Chongqing. You went to Shanghai? Then I went to Nanking. I was Nanking. in Shanghai where my aunt was. And Dr. Chia came to Shanghai to preach. Exactly I arrived, he came. So when I heard him, I was converted. So I went to Nanking. <laughs> Ramadu, I don't quite understand. When you went to uh, China, did you not already have in mind exactly where you wanted to go and where you want to study? That's right, Chongqing. It is right. settled. But when I came to Shanghai, the Lord diverted my steps. Right. Why you want to go 2005 inland when 150 miles from Shanghai is Nanking? You can study here. Right. So when I went to hear Dr. Chia, I was converted. Right? He is such a powerful preacher. Mm, mm. So I went to Nanking, and a son I brought to Shanghai, stayed with my aunt, and then after the first year, I came out, and my aunt also wanted to visit our people. So we sailed back to Singapore, myself with my son and my aunt. But the third aunt, the young aunt, who took care of my wife and two children in Xiamen, 
she had bought them a ticket on another boat to send them back because my wife and they got stuck and I we all separated. So they were repatriated before we came back. So finally I came back to Singapore and then from there, from Singapore I took a boat originally from Penang to New York forty two days. Nineteen forty seven. Immediately after Yeah, yeah. So that's how I went to America to study in forty seven. I arrived there in January 1948, late for school already. Mm. But I studied until 1950, May, mm. when I got my degree, then I came back to Singapore and mm. served until now. Mm. So you're talking in terms of from China to America, and again, this was something that was unplanned for? I was led by the Lord in a very Fantastic. marvelous way. How somehow the Lord was leading, I did not know. But suddenly the door opened for me to go to America because I was studying in Nanking. And there's a missionary there in the school who said, you are English educated, I think it's better for you to go to America. And then she gave me a catalog, Faith Seminary, and I, uh, I like it very much. I write there and then they returned. They said, okay, okay I give you a scholarship. And then I, I went to America. Reverend, what about in terms of financial providence? Financial providence, again, it is a marvelous thing. I had 2,000 Hong Kong dollars with me when I left Singapore. In those days, Hong Kong dollars was quite big, maybe worth 50 or 60 cents, 2,000. But I got cheated. The 2,000 dollars was reduced to only one tenth. Mm. Cheated by it a friend of my aunt. But the Lord must take away all props that have got nothing to trust in Him. So finally when I came back to Singapore and I saw my wife and we stayed together even for a few weeks, then my sister gave me $400 US dollars to buy a ticket Penang to New York. If I save from Singapore it's 450 So to save the $50 I took a third-class train to Penang and also visit my relatives along the way. Mm. So, my sister financed me partly mm. with a small sum, not very much. Then I got to America, then from there I learned to trust a lot and he provided for me. Occasionally, my sister would send me some money, not, not too much, but that was a good training. I was able to subsist until I graduate. And then I came back in a very glorious way. I came back by way of Europe. The ICC movement was just started, you know, the ICC, mm -hmm. International Council of Christian Churches. Mm -hmm. And I was very zealous in the movement. So I got a free trip from New York to Geneva, to London, to London. From there went down to Geneva, then after the Congress, I had a visit to Holy Land to the Lord open. That's marvelous in those days. And I went to Egypt and bought a cargo boat ticket on the cargo boat that I sailed back to Singapore. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. Mm. I noticed from your sharing that um, many times you're separated from your family. That's right. How did the family cope with this? Well, that is where the tears are there. And I told my wife, I said, if I don't go and study in America, I have no training, I cannot do any work. So she agreed. So while we were separated three years away from home in America, and she was there, so she, under my sister's uh, tutelage and teaching, she went to train as a midwife, mm -hmm. and she passed. And so the children were under her and she had to earn a living as a midwife while I was studying abroad. And so here uh, the anomalies that come in. One of my sons uh, sort of played truant, did not want to go to school like that, uh, without fatherly care. And so today he is earning a living by himself. But because at that point where I was not at home, he, he, he deviated and 
did not study hard, you see. Mm. So now he's a security guard mm. and uh, just earning his own living. Mm. Uh, that is the failure there. So there are sacrifices and there are difficulties in the family as a result of the separation. Mm. But I do not want to blame the Lord. I mean, this is part of the price you have got to pay. Yeah? Mm.